Welcome to Lady in the Red Bandana. Today I have Jack with me, the movement mechanic. So hi Jack. Hi Miss, you alright? Yes, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Cool. So I'll let you introduce yourself. Cool. Um, I'm Jack, the movement mechanic. I run a personal training and therapy business in Leicestershire and Warwickshire, um, helping people move better, feel better and improve their health and well-being so i can personally say that you have helped me and all of my family and lots of our clients as well so i personally want to thank you first for doing that for us so let's go back to the start how did you get started with all of this so i've always been quite active myself so i used to play sunday league football as a kid um then i kind of got out of play with that as I got into my later teens um, started socializing more messing around more obviously as, as that got more boring I then wanted to get back into fitness so I started running and I was quite amazed at how that changed me and helped me grow quite effortlessly so there was effort in being active and being fit and going out running and doing exercise etc uh, but it was quite a powerful kind of change quite a powerful cog so then I started to want to help people experience that as well so then I learned how to personally train people while I'm trying to get people fit and healthy I realize a lot of people are stalled through pain and niggles and injuries and other complications so that I then took it further and learned different forms of therapy so I can help people move and then get fit and healthy and improve their lives so what would you say inspired you the most to get into the industry that you're in? Um, probably that, probably the, the amount of power there is in kind of changing your beliefs through pushing yourself through boundaries and barriers that you might have not believed you could, could overcome, I guess. You're talking about boundaries. Did you ever hit any boundaries during your time training or getting used to being part of this whole fitness world? Did you ever hit any boundaries that you had to overcome? Well, I still do sometimes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. So during training, obviously you get to a point where you think, God, can I, can I keep going? Can I keep running? Can I do this extra rep? Can I lift this weight, etc.? And you attempt it. Sometimes you succeed, sometimes you fail, but either way you learn so there's that and then also just in terms of I guess always living by the standards you set in life and always trying to adhere to the way you try and educate other people in living um, doing that 100% of the time as well can sometimes be a bit of an obstacle so yeah but you get through it don't you yeah, you always get through it and you always kind of evolve even if it's not as linear as you might want it to be. So if anyone wanted to get into your industry there's we've gone through a few low points but what would be the best parts of your job? What do you like live for when you're doing this? Um, seeing kind of seeing the changes within people that they don't always directly see within themselves. So let's say use a, a weight loss client for example so you do their weight and you see their weight drop and you see their circumference change you see them get fitter healthier and happier and it's and that's that's great that's rewarding it's what they want to see so that's what you present um but then also at the same time you might see them change in other ways as well so you might see a paradigm shift in the way that they think and the way that they perceive nutrition or the way they perceive exercise in general or the way they choose to live their life and manage their routine seeing that happen as like a subconscious natural effect of losing weight and losing inches and eating better is is great because it's it's powerful and it's something so effective that just naturally happens yeah I, I mean I know when I get results whenever I've been to see you to sort my back out or my shoulders out or my neck out I always feel a hundred times better but obviously there's the homework that comes with that as well and yeah. I guess it's that is the big part of it, isn't it? You can't just fix us. No, of course not. It's like it's it's kind of like just being the guide, I guess, kind of 
using my knowledge and skills to assess or to let's say prescribe and educate someone to try this and try that and you know do this it will save you time here do that it will save you time here get everything back into balance but then obviously they have to do it you know it's like taking a horse to water it's, it's all that kind of stuff so yeah absolutely so talking about knowledge and training and that sort of thing where did you get your training and where did you learn to do what you're doing now so the baseline entry um, was with a company called the training room that i did my personal training diploma um, and then i started out further education with something called the UKSCA, which is the UK Strength and Conditioning Association. And to be fair, I was a bit out of my depth when I went onto their workshops and uh, went through their assessment process and failed numerous times because it's quite advanced. Got there in the end. Um, that was all around the country at different university gyms and stuff and performance centers. Then I did something called neurokinetic therapy, which is the baseline of my therapy practice. I did that in Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London, um, as well as the London School of Osteopathy. So I learned that there. Went to Loughborough College to do my sports massage. And then I've done numerous other certifications to complement all of that here, there and everywhere. And it continues, doesn't it, education? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing a master's at the minute in strength and conditioning. So I'm trying to get my, my MSc, which means a lot to me because I... I didn't go to uni as a kid, but obviously getting the qualification I've got for over the years got me a place on the on an MSc without having a BSc. Um, and I'm in my second year of doing that, it's in a, like a part-time online learning. So it's going quite well this year as well, which is good. That's amazing because you've gone from when you were saying at the beginning that you you were a bit out of your debt and that you failed. A lot of people would probably would have quit and gone, I'm not doing this, but you obviously loved it enough to keep on going. Yeah, like the, the UKCA, they're known for um, a very high high standards. So like every time I failed, I, was, I got a lot of feedback. I knew I'd done stuff really well, but there was just that one critique that just didn't tick the box. And it was like a massive, like, uh, like really frustrating at the time. So it, it didn't bother me having to go back and back again. And the funny thing is most people go to university, do their BSc, do their MSc, and then go for their accreditation with the UKCA. But I did it first because I didn't have the BSc. Yeah. So naturally I, I've done this all backwards, but it's worked. So. But it, well, it's worked for you and you work for yourself now, so which is brilliant. So what made you want to go from, obviously you must have worked for someone first. So I worked for the NHS first. Then I worked for Virgin Active. The Virgin Active got to go by Nuffield Health. And their values as companies were very different. So when I left school, I was a care assistant. So right. in some perspectives, my values lined up with Nuffield Health. But since then, as I grew, I got into sports performance and fitness. So I was actually more suited to Virgin Active. And when Nuffield Health took over, they changed all our contracts and stuff like that. So from the moment they took over the health club I worked at, my back was up against the wall. So even though I had my responsibility to my clients, the way the company was run was a bit against what I wanted to, to do. So on side of what I was doing, I was then also doing some of my own work here and everywhere. Um, was slowly planning to go self-employed, but never really was prepared to do it because you kept telling yourself all kinds of things to stay in the environment in because you have that security and stability there. I think in 2019, I think I made enough to run my own business as well as working at Nuffield Health alongside what I was doing. But I was still that little bit kind of stuck in an environment. And then I had a few kind of disputes with Nuffield and then kind of left at March 2020. So. And that's when you started out on your own, hopefully. Yeah, when I started the business. I just, just in time for COVID to hit. <laughs> yeah, it was a strange one. At first, there was kind of like no support. Luckily, I'd had some um, savings behind me to, to look after myself. And then I was able to do outdoor personal training. And a lot of the people I worked with wanted to keep working. So I started doing that. 
and then since then it's been a little bit up and down and because I've been running for a while now I've been able to have a few bit of support from the councils over the last few months which has been great so yeah that's good so with your the knowledge that you have we're talking about knowledge do you feel empowered by that and what and how do you want your clients and your audience to feel with that knowledge that you have um it's mostly about giving them um, clarity so in in relation to someone coming to see me in pain you know it's like okay this hurts or that hurts and i don't know why and i've tried this that and the other and it's still not working so using some of the skills i've got helps me diagnose and say well it's it's, this is probably a root cause before this so let's work our way through it and giving them that clarity then hopefully gives them a bit of belief that they can get rid of their pain that should then give them the encouragement to do their exercises and then get better um the same with health and fitness you know you hear so many different things throughout the world from all different sources about this is the best way to keep fit this is the best way to eat this is that and the other and it's just being able to give them the clarity and put in context to what they're saying rather than letting them create all these different tangents it's really it's a bit scary sometimes because i can be scrolling through facebook and so you can see so many different things like this drink will make you skinny this like tablet will make you you know have loads of muscles or whatever and it's just like i i like to think that i'm I'm a little bit intelligent to know that that's not going to happen straight away or whatever but you know somebody could be quite vulnerable in thinking that's going to work for them how would you convince that person to to change their mind and say what you do and what you're advising is the best thing rather than a drink that's going to make them skinny in a week not that that would work um i think like first and foremost is just giving them a little bit of education towards it's all about how much you intake and how much you output irrelevant of that if someone has a belief towards a certain a drink you know like oh this cup of tea just motivates me and you know i I won't then try and collapse that i'll try and keep work with that and harmonize it okay yeah that's fine cool have that in the morning kind of get yourself in gear but evidently remember that it's you know you've got to be spending more energy than you're putting into your body so you can use up some of the stores as fuel that you've you want to you want to burn so just kind of re-educating them without kind of just disregarding what they currently believe so you harmonize their beliefs with the education unless of course their beliefs are then gonna put them at risk I guess with it's a lot of trust as well within your field yeah but it's like it's my own beliefs are excuse me you got to know like and trust someone right so the first thing I try and do is get to know someone if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't you know you, you build a relationship within that you start to build trust and then from there once that reports there you can start to to help each other because the crazy thing is evidently every relationship I've had every person I've worked with you know I've had a return from that relationship as well so you always learn from the people you surround yourself with which is good. So we've talked a lot about what you do for other people and what you have done for a long time but what do you do to look after yourself because I think that's so important in every industry to look after yourself as well mentally and physically so what do you do? um so naturally i always try and exercise keep fit keep healthy alongside that i try and always eat well don't get me wrong there's times when i fail you know there's times when i i want a bit of a binge as well and eat something i'm probably not the most beneficial to my health but i'll also try and bounce it off with exercise um i try and have a few morning rituals as well so when I wake up I'll always go through a a routine for my health for cleansiness same as when I go to sleep um that's kind of it so eat well exercise well and there's a few interventions I do throughout the day that might be a little bit more niche to then keep myself healthy so what do you do that would be what what are those niche things that you do um so i use some adaviric practice in the mornings so i i tongue scrape when i floss um i use hoopy ear candles when i can as well i dry brush to help my lymphatic system 
So to detoxify, to get all the toxins out of your body, you need to drain your lymphatics, which you can do through movement and through breath work. But dry brushing is also great for it, so I do that. I try and do some breath work within, within a daily practice and be conscious of where my breath is whenever I'm doing stuff. Um, kind of, I use toe dividers when watching TV to open up my toes to allow the muscles in my feet to function better. So when I walk, I naturally get a better relationship between my feet and my core, so the floor to the core, as well as some pads on my feet to help me sleep and that kind of stuff. That's loads. That's good though yeah. that you do it. I would say we were taught when we were younger so much, obviously within Indian culture, like tongue scraping, hopi ear candles, breathing, toe dividers, all of those sorts of things we've been taught from when we were really little. So all of these sort of holistic things are all coming into, well, I don't like to say into fashion because it's not a fashion, it's a way of life, but it's nice to know that other people have embraced it as well because they know it works. People are becoming more aware, I guess, like I, I oil pull as well some mornings for like 20 minutes and it's like people don't understand people don't know what this stuff is they don't know why to do it they don't know what the benefit of it is and because of that they don't do it and then as soon as you learn about it you give it a try and then you start to reap the benefits of it so then you keep keep doing it I guess yeah I, I think it's again researching finding somebody who knows what they're talking about professionally as well to advise you on what to do and I can't emphasize that enough to go to somebody that knows what they're talking about. We can pull whatever we like off the internet. It could tell you, like I was talking about earlier, you can say that anything's gonna do anything for you, but I do think that getting professional knowledge is the key to all of this as well. Someone who's experienced it as well. So good or bad, you know, you have to go through stuff to understand the, the cost of it. and. The benefits and the repercussions so then you can coach and educate in relation to it so yeah so someone who understands it someone who's experienced it as well i'm guessing well i'm guessing you tell your clients your audience that looking after yourself is important like i said not just physically but mentally as well but why do you why is that so important for when they're doing their home care stuff um a to cre create change you know because you do what you always do you're going to get what you've always got and like let's say you're in pain or you're you're not happy with the current way that you're living and your health and things are getting all on top you're not getting the outcomes you want in different parts of your life there needs to be some kind of change somewhere so the, the first thing is okay well can you start doing this and you start to get this change here okay great once you, you kind of push the boundaries their boundaries a little bit and know they're open to changing this or changing that you can then try and add a little bit more and a little bit more because then evidently as they change in all these contexts they'll also change in other contexts and then they'll learn different things and they'll use different strategies to then succeed and get some of the outcomes they want to get yeah definitely so this is a question that i haven't really asked many people but i think it's important to know that we've all changed over this time, that we've not been able to do the things that we love as much, but what would you like to carry on doing that you're doing now that you didn't used to do before lockdown? Um, probably spending more time reading. So I've always read when I've had to. So I've always had to read for courses, workshops, work, education, but sometimes now I just read for the pleasure of reading. Um, and it's usually still relative to what I do as a living, but making sure I have the time to do that. I've uh, been cooking a little bit more, so having more time to do that. Um, some of the communication I've started and different methods of communication with different people has it's, it's been great as well. Um, and just kind of having a bit more time and space for myself rather than for kind of work, 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 which is really hard in what I do because it's like, I really enjoy what I do. I love what I do. Why wouldn't I want to do it? Okay, yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to help this person, that person. And then you get to the point where you're saying yes so much that like you're then saying no to other stuff as well. So it's finding that balance, um, which will be hard because naturally we've been forced the opposite way because of COVID. 
So you will naturally overcompensate at first and go back one way and then you've got to kind of rein it in a little bit. But eventually, hopefully, through the contrast of the two, I'll find a decent balance of it, which should be good. I think balance is so important to everyday life anyway, in general. It's one of those things that I think in your industry, my industry, we just get so wrapped up with booking people in constantly, one after the other after the other, doing everything for everyone else, which is what our job is all about, but then you forget about yourself. And then I think if you're not 100%, let's say you've done a full day, that client that you're doing in the morning needs to have the same amount of effort. So or the client you're doing in the evening has to have the same amount of effort as that person that you've seen in the morning as well. So yeah. it's about having that break time and doing the things that you love as well, which is good. Really strange because the conflict comes from a good intention so it's like i've got this conflict that I've, you know i'm i'm not having enough time for myself and i'm not at my best but the the reason why is through a good intention it's not like i'm it's because i've been going out getting drunk or i've been not looking after myself because i am doing all of that as well but it's just because i'm i'm trying to do more than i, I should because i don't want to let someone down someone down here so then it it becomes a bit of a conflict because the intentions are pure but the the results aren't as good as you'd want them to be. It's a guilt thing, I think, as well. You do get, it's not anyone else making you feel guilty. It's yeah. yourself making you feel guilty. You don't want to let someone down. So it's like, okay, can you help me? It's like, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You can't really say that, you know? Yeah, it's ways of saying it, isn't it? It's like allocating your time, like you said. Yeah. yeah. So with covid with lockdown i'm going to ask you the question because uh, people want to know these things what have you done to adapt um it's a strange one because my job role is naturally quite extroverted but then i can be very introverted as well so i think naturally i've kind of just accepted it was it is, it is what it is and there's nothing i can do about it and kind of look for things that I can do that will still help me develop and grow in all different ways and just internalize more. So I spent more time kind of reading like mentioned, reflecting like mentioned, learning new skills, um, practicing new things, educating myself in different avenues that I might, I might not have done before. Um, and then just enjoying a bit more time exercising without such a rush, like going back into the next appointment and stuff like that. So. That's yeah, good. good. Like I said, I think we've all learned new bits about ourselves as well. Thank you so much for your time. It's been really cool speaking to you. Thank and you hopefully I'll be able to speak to you like face to face soon at an appointment. But um, is there anything? Yeah, fingers crossed. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, thank you for your time and making me think about some of those things because some of the things I might reflect on, others I might not. So it's always good to for having someone help you delve into those areas. So thank you. Move and move as much as you can. So like we don't have to be running marathons and racing Usain Bolt, but if you can walk, get out and walk. If you can part further away, part further away. You know, if you've got time to commit to some exercise, do that. So move as much as you possibly can. Um, try and eat as well as you possibly can. Stick to like an 80-20 or a 90-10 rule, where the 80-90% of the time the food has nutrients, it's good for you, it's healthy for you. Because evidently that's what your body fuels off, that whole you are what you eat kind of thing. But don't be, only if that's what you want, I guess. Um, but make sure you do have that 10 to 20 percent space for enjoying your food as well but you can enjoy healthy food too so there's that and then the last one so move well eat well and then um, kind of do what do what makes you happy like regardless of judgment or what someone else might think or what they may want you to say or want or how they may want you to behave just do what makes you happy even if it's deemed as good or bad or however someone might say it's wrong it's right if it's if it's what you feel is right at that time just do it just go with the flow kind of thing just just go with what feels right and if it, it if it's not right whatever that causes will eventually turn itself around to put you where you need to be so.
we have been the lady in the red bandana and we want you to be empowered to believe in yourself. <laughs>